I wanted to take a moment and thank you all for watching and subscribing. It makes a tremendous difference. Every comment, like, and subscription help to grow the channel. I'm elated at the response so far. I hope to continue doing this for a long time. I put myself into a position with this video. There's some interesting milling near the end, and I didn't want anyone to miss it. So I put a little eye candy up front. I hope there are no objections. What is it about this occupation that dominates our most thoughtful hours? And when lucky, the unconscious as well. Extensions of these thoughts allow us to contemplate these concepts on a new level. We develop and change these imaginary forms as tangible objects. 3D modeling extends this vision. Not a perfect translation, a fresh lens on the aim. A unique perspective of the mind's eye. To extend the natural state, not to replace it. A cherished tool in the arsenal. Originated in mind, verified by the need to create. Not in the sense of production, but to improve the skills, tools, and objects formed. It may seem like the goal is to make things. It's not. The goal is to develop a process for making things and apply this process to solve problems. Sure, it's satisfying to complete something. The maker discards these things onto the next project. A creator's momentum develops from the process, not the result. I enjoy roughing stock, as a necessity and for its aesthetic sense. The CNC requires accurate tolerances in thickness and surface flatness. I use the drum sander to achieve this. It's not perfect, but I know the intricacies of its imprecision. I work around them. It can be tedious work, but the results are excellent. I've spent some time on this journey, this path littered with attempts to define these shapes in resolute terms. It's best to learn from the source and develop a method from it. Coax it from tradition. The shapes we attempt to define in these virtual worlds are fraught with problems. I've spent many sleepless nights plotting methods to describe the complex geometry of an archtop instrument. We are trying to define a shape hand-carved, where hand and eye find incongruence, mind and hand plan method and take edge to wood to desired effect. A rigid recreation does no justice. I shape these surfaces as if carving them. I manipulate the virtual construction of my vision and transform it at will beyond the capability of the physical work. This instrument is formed, not carved, yet designed as shaped by hand.
maybe it's an odd time to discuss archtop faces. I've developed a fondness for this method, and while I enjoy chalk fitting braces, it can be tedious and also satisfying. On a whim, I attempted a CNC fit brace. The results were encouraging. I have CNC cut the interior shape. This makes for a reliable representation of the virtual contour. Replicated on the brace, this makes for a close fit. I believe this contributes to the tonal response of the instrument. The braces strengthen the top without adding undue mass. A well-fit brace does this exceptionally well. Here, trestle bracing serves a few masters. It provides strength to the top and locks the top and back together, subduing sympathetic resonance and provides a structure for the pickups. The designers wanted to keep as much hollow body tone as possible and make the instrument useful and increase stage volumes. From an engineering standpoint, it's an appealing solution. It may seem that I have missed an opportunity to replicate the interior contour on the back of the feet of this trestle brace. There's intent in my method. Leaving them out makes milling the F-holes and pickup pockets convenient. This structure is coming together, and if truth be told, it's both satisfying and structurally sound. Thanks for watching.